Hey guys, DC here again with another video. This time I'll be talking about my aluminum TIG welding setup using my 250p AC-DC welder by Yes Welder and my 6500 watt predator generator by Harper Freight. Please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And without further ado, let's jump right in. I want to start off this video by explaining that if you buy this WP-17 TIG torch by Yes Welder, not including with the 250p, you will need to buy an argon hose coupler with female-female connections. Here's a pic of that product. In order to attach it to the 250p, as you can see here, the argon lead from the TIG torch has a male connection and the connection to the 250p is also male, thus needing a coupler. Also, the foot pedal is a separate purchase and not included with the 250p. To connect your foot pedal, you simply disconnect the 5 pin connector from the 250p. Leave that connection disconnected and connect your 5 pin connector from your foot pedal to the welder. The 5 pin connection lead for the foot pedal can go either direction, it does not matter. And the other side of the 5 pin lead goes to the side of the foot pedal. Now the welder itself is a 200 amp TIG stick welder capable of welding steel, stainless steel, and aluminum. So far I've only welded 3 quarter inch aluminum with it. The foot pedal again is not included with the welder and it does give you control of the amperage which is very helpful. I'm using the argon lead that came with the welder after realizing a leak when I was using my longer argon lead I purchased off Amazon. It seems like the connection on the Amazon lead is shorter than the connection on the Yes Welder and has a slightly different nipple to it on the top. It stays loose even when tightened. For now, I'll just use the Argon lead it came with. It works fine. Here we have the Yes Welder connection on the left and the Amazon connection on the right. Connect your lead back on, make sure everything is nice and tight and be sure to check for any leaks. I'm using a 125 cubic foot tank with 100% argon and I purchased this off Amazon for $380 and that was with a small discount that Amazon had that day. I recommend checking your local supply store before you order this from Amazon. I'm using a 2% lanthanated 332nd tungsten which is an all around tungsten that can be used for both steel and aluminum. I'm using a WP17 gas lens with a number 8 size cup and welding on 3 quarter inch aluminum plate. Later in the video, I'll be breaking down my TIG torch and explaining each part and its function, mainly for beginner welders, but your seasoned welders are more than welcome to watch. The 250P has a three prong typical 200 amp welder power connection and the adapter I made myself with supplies from Home Depot and a power lead from Amazon. I have a video on how I made this adapter, I'll leave a link below. I'm running the welder off a 6500 watt predator generator by Harbor Freight using a four prong connection to get the most out of the welder and a smoother arc. Again I made this generator welder adapter, I'll leave a link below for the video on how I wired it. After checking everything is tight and I make sure of no leaks, I turn the knob a few turns and dial my pressure between 20 to 25. I'm going to break down and explain my TIG torch. For those already familiar with this info, you're more than welcome to skip ahead to the weld machine settings. We start off by loosening the end cap in order to remove the tungsten. When it comes to aluminum, your tungsten doesn't necessarily need to be sharpened as it balls out when striking an arc, but it definitely needs to be clean. Next, we remove our ceramic cup, which in this case is a number 8. The higher the number, the bigger the cup. Followed by the gas lens, which helps with cleaner welds due to improved gas coverage. In this case, we have a 332nd gas lens. Only a 332nd tungsten will fit. The collet is a big part of the TIG torch, which holds in the tungsten in place when tightened. In this case, a 332nd size collet. The plastic adapter ring helps keep your setup tight and leak free. Last but not least, your end cap, which tightens everything up. And now you can watch as I put the whole setup back together.
Now we have all that sorted out, I'm going to show you the settings the welder came with straight out the box. First off, make sure you're on straight AC and not pulse AC. The first setting you will see is your max amperage. Click the knob to go through the rest of the settings. The second setting is your AC frequency, which is set to 75 Hz. Third is your AC balance, which is set to 30% positive, 70% negative. Fourth is your downslope, which in this case we don't need because of the foot pedal. Fifth is your stopping amps, set to 25 amps. Sixth is your post flow. In this case, I turned it down to 2.5 to save a little gas. Seventh is your tungsten size, which is set to 2.4 millimeters or 332nd. 1.6 millimeters would be 1 16th. Eighth is your pre flow setting, set to half a second. Ninth is your starting amps, set to 25 amps. Tenth is a down slope, which we don't need because of the foot pedal. Last, make sure you're set on 2T. Now, in order to get the welder to register the foot pedal, you must hold down the foot pedal for about 5 seconds or until the light next to the box arrow turns on, indicating remote on. Here, I'm holding the foot pedal and waiting for the light to turn on. As soon as it turns on, I let go. And now your foot pedal is registered to the welder. Let's get ready to weld. I'm using Vulcan 4043 332nd filler rod from Harbor Freight. My only complaint is that the bottom end of the plastic container gave out, so I had to tape it. Now I'm preheating for two reasons. It's obvious that the aluminum plate is pretty thick, and a little extra heat will help you form the puddle faster. Second, aluminum is a very porous metal and retains a lot of moisture. You'll see the water droplets seeping out and dissipating with the heat. I like to start by letting off the foot pedal a little bit and running the cleaning action of the AC-DC down the area I'm about to weld. Helps with the cleaner puddle and sort of lays a path so you don't lose track. After that I focus on forming my puddle and I wait for it to get to an almost mirror type of shine and I start to dab. I'm really happy and impressed on how this welder performed. I haven't really had the chance to dial it in or push it to its limits, but so far I guess welder has been consistent on good performance. I know a big part of this goes to the power coming from the generator, which helps with the smoother arc. If interested in buying any of these products, I'll leave a link below for each of them. Please be sure to use discount code DCAndrade for 10% off your purchase on the Yes Welder website. Big thanks to Yes Welder and Harbor Freight for supplying quality machinery and tools for affordable pricing. And thank you to my viewers and followers who help make this possible every day. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Until next time, peace.